Dear students, in our last class, we have looked into the purposes of green chemistry. So today we will discuss about the 12 principles of green chemistry. Green chemistry revolves around the 12 principles. So what are these 12 principles? First one is heart of green chemistry. It's to minimize the waste product formation. So when we discuss about the purposes of green chemistry, we have told that we should minimize the waste product formation. If the wastes are formed, they are dangerous to the environment and to our life also. So we have to develop a zero waste technology. Practically speaking, is it possible? Yes, we should develop. We should develop, you should use green techniques, green technology to minimize the waste product formation. Waste product formation either should be zero or it should be minimum. Suppose if the waste product is formed in the reaction, what are we going to do? It's we always know that prevention is better than cure. So we have to prevent the formation of waste better than to treat or clean up after the waste is form formed. It is better to prevent the formation of waste rather than to treat or clean up the waste after its formation. Suppose some waste is formed in the reaction, what can we do? We have to use the waste product of one system as the raw material for the other system. Some of the examples we will look into it how the waste can be used for the other reactions or other source. Bottom ash of the thermal power station can be used as the raw material in the brick industry and cement industry. So this ash will not be dumped into the environment. It is being used as the raw material for the other industry. Nowadays we hear lot of plastic waste is being used for the road construction. So plastic will not be dumped into the environment. It is being reused. Plastics are also being used for the generation of the fuel. Some of the scientists are working on the reuse of the plastic for the generation of the fuel. Another example if you have to look into is effluent coming out from the cleaning of the machinery parts may be used as the coolant water in thermal power station. Normally pe people use lot of water for cleaning the machinery parts and that will be let out into the ground which is going to be a waste. We can use this water as a coolant for other industries. The muni municipal waste is a big cause of concern. This municipal waste can be used as a source of energy. The second important principle of green chemistry is atom economy. When we develop a chemical process, we always expect 100% yield and zero waste formation or byproduct formation. Once the byproduct is formed, it cannot be used as a product or waste is formed means we have to dump it somewhere. So when the waste is formed in a chemical reaction, we have to treat the waste and we have to dispose it. That is again a Hercules task. So how can we achieve the maximum yield? So that is measured in terms of percent atom economy. So what is percent atom economy? Let us look into it. Maximum incorporation of the starting materials into the desired product. So what does it mean? It means how whatever the starting material we take for the chemical reaction should completely get converted into product or we can say in other terms it is 100% yield. So minimize the formation of the byproduct and waste will give you the 100% yield. So how it is measured? So percent atom economy can be measured. Percent atom economy is equal to formula weight of the desired product divided by sum of the formula weight of the all the reactant used in the reaction. So I told you we have to achieve 100% yield. So percent atom economy is equal to formula weight of the desired product divided by sum of the formula weight of the all the reactants used in the reaction into 100. 
So, this is very simple calculation whatever the raw materials you, you have you are taking if it is 100 percent getting converted into the product means you have 100 percent economy in that. Let us see one example substitution reaction in this example bitanol is treated with sodium bromide and sulfuric acid to give bromobutene and some byproducts. So, now let us look in let us put the formula percent atom economy is equal to mass of the desired product and mass of all the starting materials we have taken. So, that is mass of if you take if you add the carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms and bromine atoms and divided by mass of carbon atom, hydrogen atom, oxygen, bromine, sodium and sulfur into 100 that comes to be 137 AMU divided by 275 AMU that is equal to 50 percent. 50 percent yield is not a good atom economy. So, what should be our percentage here? If it is 100 percent we can say that all the starting material we have taken got converted to product. So, we say at that time it is an efficient process. And when you work in the industries always we look for 100 percent atom economy. So, if you get 100 percent yield with the maximum purity your atom economy is excellent. It will reduce the cost of the product per kg. It will save your time less consumption of energy will be there. So, the one of the most important principle of green chemistry is attaining 100 percent atom economy. Next let us move on to the third principle to avoid the use and formation of toxic materials. We all know that toxic materials are very dangerous to the environment as well as the human life and animal life. So, how can we avoid use of this toxic materials and also the formation of the toxic material. Technically and economically to speak the synthetic methodology should avoid the use of generation of toxic substances avoid environmentally hazardous substances. These toxic substances are definitely hazardous to the environment. So, what can we do? We have to adopt the synthetic methodology which are environmental friendly. Next principle is use of non-toxic chemical products. In the previous principle we have seen that we have to avoid the formation of toxic chemicals. This principle states that we should use non-toxic chemical products in the chemical processes. Chemical product should have the efficacy to function, but with the reduced toxicity. Whenever we develop a molecule, we expect that this molecule should produce maximum efficacy. It may be a pharma compound, it may be a pesticide. Whenever we use a pharma compound or a medicine, we expect its efficacy should be 100 percent. What does it mean? It is required to act on the site where it is required to act and it should not act on the other parts of the body. After its action in the body, it has to be degraded, degraded and it has to be excreted from the body which, which should not be toxic. So, toxic compound formation we should avoid. Use of non-toxic chemicals we have to incorporate in the chemical technology. Uh, let us see one example for this principle. Adipic acid. Adipic acid is used in polymer industry. Exam for example, manufacture of nylon, polyurethane and lubricants. So, adipic acid is synthesized from benzene. Benzene is a carcinogenic chemical and benzene is also a volatile organic compound which pollutes the air. So, using benzene as the starting material for the synthesis ed of adipic acid is not eco-friendly. So, what can we do? We can synthesize adipic acid from glucose which is a green technique. We will see in our future classes many more examples for this principle. The next principle is minimum use of auxiliary substances. We will discuss about this in our next class.